Well, we're on our way to the veterinarian clinic in Kona, Dallas. My my son, my big black rescue dog. We're gonna get a new weight on him. Last time he was like 100 pounds, and then he was 98 pounds. And uh, I've been starving him. He hasn't gotten food has been measured very carefully and I guard Kara when she eats so that he doesn't get any nibbles out of her food bowl but he's going to have a follow-up surgery he had a torn ACL that's an anterior cruciate ligament it's like on your knee so he had knee surgery already last year on his right rear leg and uh it was a little tight, you know, it was like the repair job was good. He could walk again, but it was tight. Here we are approaching Friend Town. This is so cool. We're out here in the country with the rich people. Look at these big estates. Look at that house over there. Can you see that house over there? Really awesome. This field used to have a donkey and a miniature horse in it. So we're early. It's, uh, I'm about 20 minutes early, so I'm going to have to sit in the car and wait with Kona. They have, uh, they have boarding, like if you want to go on vacation for two weeks and board your dog. They have the kennel, outside kennel and the boarding place. It's a really nice veterinary clinic. The doctor, Dr. Horn, is so excellent. I wish she was my human doctor. She is so on the money. She is so intelligent. She just she gets every diagnosis correct. She prescribes the right medications. And uh, she's like really, she doesn't like people anymore. She's like, she can't hardly stand to be around the dog owners. So I can relate to that, you know. Okay, so let's see. Turn off the windshield wipers. Just sit here. That's a uh, children's pirate ship. And a slide. You want to see Kona? Do you, do you want to see Kona? I bet the people want to see Kona, don't they? Where's my boy? He's in the back seat. He rides really great in the car. He's a wonderful dog. I don't know how he became a stray dog and picked up by animal control, but when Kona looks at me, he has these, like, amber eyes. They're like a light kind of brown. Come here, Kona. Show them your face. Show them your face, honey. Anyhow, Kona will look at me, and uh, he looks like a people. He looks like a person looking at me. He has the intelligence... And he has like a certain amount of humanity that I feel like he's reading my emotional, my mental state. And if he's concerned about me, he'll bark. And then I have to reassure him that I'm okay and everything's fine. Uh, a lot of people with PTSD get dogs. It's kind of funny though. A lot of the women get like a little 12-pound fluffy white dog. And they get some certificates so they have they can take their emotional support dog. I drove up to Columbus, Ohio. I went up to the big city and got me a pity mix. Kara, her picture's in my community post. And so, like, I'm different from a lot of female veterans. I don't know. I don't know why I'm the way I am, but I am the way I am. Like, I like carrying a knife with me. Like, I have one in my car. I have one in my bedroom. My Lorena Bobbitt knife is in my bedroom. This one is in my car. And then I have one that I carry in my pocket. I also have one I hang around my neck. And I just feel more better. Like I feel safe and more relaxed if I have a blade on me. So, whatever, you know, whatever... Whatever it takes, right? But I'm feeling better. I'm on 30 milligrams of my antidepressant instead of 15. 
went back to the emergency room. I've got the cancer thing going on. I'll have surgery later. And uh, I got some nausea medicine. And I got some pain medicine. And I got some dressings to change my wound. So I'm feeling like a lot more comfortable as opposed to two days ago. I just went to the VA emergency room and I said, primary care isn't giving me what I need. And I'm going to stay here until I get what I need to feel better. And if you don't give it to me today, I'm coming back tomorrow. And then I'm coming back the next day. I'm going to be in your emergency room where I don't belong because the emergency room is for heart attacks, shark bites, you fell off a ladder on the third floor, you know, or that's a freaking emergency. It's not an urgent care clinic. It's not a primary care clinic. You don't go to the emergency room because you have a sore throat and a fever. That's not a freaking emergency. And I explained to them that uh, I needed nausea medicine and I needed something for pain and that I wasn't going to be a happy camper unless they met my needs. And the doctor was great. A wonderful Indian doctor. And uh, it was like he went, check, check, check. Like, you want what? You want nausea medicine? What's going on with your stomach? Check. Okay, you, you need pain medicine? Let me look at your wound. Yeah, you can have pain medicine. He gave me something even stronger than what I asked for, you know. I was going to go low ball, like give me the lowest dose possible, and he, he gave me something even stronger. I've only taken that medicine once when I was at the dentist. I think it's called Percocet. It's oxycodone. Because Vicodin is hydrocodone, and then you have Tylenol with coating, Tylenol number three, which they give you for dental or uh, you've got a kidney stone, you need a little pain medication. So uh, gathering place is on oxycodone, and I cut the pill in half, and I take half, and then I wait a few hours, and if I'm still hurting, I take the other half. But I went, I went like 12 hours on half a pill. So, you know, I can get by with one pill in a 24-hour period. And, uh, you know, it's really difficult to get a pain prescription nowadays because of the whole, um, what is it, the Oxycontin, fentanyl, all that stuff, and then the federal laws changed. So, you know, thanks to that, everybody suffers now. Gathering place, it's July 1st, payday, payday, the first of the month. Get up, get your checks. Have a good day. Bye-bye.